Hey Tommy, today we've got a very special dude I love or hate my ride at home edition because we are going around the world but it's more special than that yeah it is because we are not just looking at foreign trucks these are all american trucks that have made their way overseas yeah an american truck abroad how cool is that because we've got some of the biggest trucks in the world and i love seeing how people use them in the rest of the world so let's get right to it and let's talk about the first at home edition video who do we have and what do we have so we have a ford raptor yep an f-150 raptor in saudi arabia and it's got one of the coolest rear shells i've ever seen should we take a look yeah roll the video please Hi everybody, um, my name is uh, Faiz and uh, I'm talking to you from Saudi Arabia and I'd like to show you my rig. So this is Raptor 2019 uh, uh, 802A. Uh, I bought it new a few months ago and we didn't do any changes in the engine. So we strengthen uh, the uh, springs, uh, the rear side of the car. Uh, to compensate for the low payload of the Raptor. These are the changes that I made in my car. And this is basically something that uh, we, do, we do in Saudi Arabia. Uh, there's the people that are uh, specialized for this work. And this is the uh, storage. And having this, uh, some of the stuff. And this is, this is my, uh, gain stuff for the barbecue and this is for the essentials of recovery and here's something very interesting I'd like to show to you that's my butane gas up top there and this is the stove and this is the stove here and this is our so we fixed uh, one domestic uh, fridge and freezer of uh, 50 liters uh, which is supplied by the solar power and it is stored uh, in the uh, two uh, North Star uh, battery uh, each one is uh, uh, 210 watts and uh, we have an inv inventor uh, of uh, 3000 uh, plus uh, we uh, fixed also an ARB air compressor with the uh, big cylinder uh, which you can see down underneath uh, the solar power is 150 watts and is fixed over the structure and is, it is also supplying uh, our air conditioner uh, which is fixed uh, to the ceiling of the structure okay now this is the tent completed All right. Wow, just wow. That is um, one of the craziest outfitted Ford Raptors I have ever seen. I love the Saudi Arabia flair uh, that this truck has. I gotta <laughs> give that a 10 out of 10, Tommy, because uh, yeah, you know, I mean, I think the camel is no longer the boat or is a ship of the desert. I think it's the Raptor now. What the heck is a ship of a desert? I think that's what a camel's supposed to be, right? The ship of the desert. <laughs> You ever heard that? No. You guys are just too young. <laughs> oh, man. What do you give it? I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. I love this build. It really is a cool looking truck. And out in the Middle East, where there's wide open stretches of desert, a Raptor is really the perfect vehicle. I'd love to have that here in America. I am very jealous. That is uh, something that I think would be even hard to do here. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Ship of the Desert? Yeah. There was a Family Guy sketch yeah. where they went train on the water, boat on the tracks. Okay, yeah, that's what that. that reminds me of. It's completely backwards, but okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I think that's a thing. You guys Google it. Let me know if I screwed up. <laughs> All right. Next up, we are going to Bill. Yeah. Bill has a Chevrolet Silverado, but not like one you have ever seen. This is pretty wild. This is an HD truck yeah. in Australia. 
that's set up like an Overland build. You know, I love when we see American trucks, especially big trucks in Australia, because let's face it, we've got very similar topography. So we've got desert, you guys have deserts. You know, we've got a lot of space. You guys have a lot of space. We have a lot of people, you guys don't. So let's see what you've done, Bill. We've got Floridians, they've got kangaroos. This is, yeah, well, yeah, that's a whole different thing. Hey, good day from Australia, South Australia to be precise. This is my 2012 LML Silverado Duramax. Uh, it's a 3500, well, it was a 2500. It's been, uh, had an increase in GVM uh, to 3500, single rear wheel, converted to right hand drive for Australian conditions. Big canopy on the back here with all the gear in the back. Got an air safe hitch and a rather large set of air horn. Klein 730s up there. Quite a lot of gear in the uh, in the back, which has a lithium battery tucked away to run uh, the accessories here. I've got an Australian-made travel buddy, 12 volt oven, uh, Victron gauge to tell me the uh, state of the battery and so on. Fridge, thermometers, air pressure gauge. Got a Pumped up to 150 PSI at the moment, rear camera, extra brake lights. Over this side's the fridge, it's an upright angle fridge, nothing exciting in there at the moment, no grog. Spare tyre in the back, because it's got a 6 inch lift and I, even though I'm 6 foot 1, uh, I find it difficult to lift, lift that uh, 50 odd kilos or 100, 110 pounds or whatever that is in American um, up. So I've just recently under, one of the things I've done under the COVID lockdown is to install a, a winch with a jib that comes out and I can lift the tire up with that uh, effortlessly. Got an inverter in there. We run on 240 volts here in Australia. So that's a 12 volt to 240 volt uh, inverter, 600 watt and a uh, DC to DC charger. Bar work on the front here, it's Australian made by a company called Tuff, T-U-F-F. Uh, we have some, uh, quite a lot of uh, kangaroos here in Australia and you don't want to be hitting them and breaking the radiator and uh, everything else at the front so those, uh, this massive bull bar does the job. Uh, there's the interior, there's the steering wheel on the, on the wrong side for you guys in America. Uh, added a lot of switches um, down the bottom to control lights and air horns and uh, all sorts of other things. A few milk crates poked together. Tools are in a cupboard that I made myself, just bodgy sort of a timber thing. Uh, I've added a temperature sensor to the rear differential so I can uh, monitor that on the CTS2 gauge in the driver's cab. That's the CTS2 gauge there, air pressure in the airbags, air pressure for the uh, air safe hitch which I can control here up, up and down. Okay, that's about it. Oh my gosh Tommy, did you see the size of that rhubarb? That is more like a moose bar on the front of that thing. Incredible! I mean look how much work he's done to that truck. That is heavy duty <laughs> defined. It looks like something out of Mad Max at front end. Isn't that cool? Yeah, yeah, that is, that is, like I said, you could knock over a moose with that. A kangaroo would just go ping if you hit it in the outback. So what do you think of the truck? Oh, it's a 10 out of 10. I mean, this is such a cool looking build. Uh, very purposeful. And that front end with these uh, bars that extend over the wheel arches yeah. for additional protection is just nuts. Yeah, yeah, I, I just, uh, I'm fascinated by these trucks, Tommy, so let's, Move on over to the next one. What do we got? So next up, we have a Ford F-150 from Denmark. This Denmark. Is, this is a big truck to drive around in Denmark. But let's, I take it it's not the red one. No, it's not the red one. <laughs> All right, I actually want to know Hi, more about the red one. My name is Bo, and I'm from Denmark. This is my one F-50 King Ranch Power Stroke Diesel. It's a 2019 demonstrator with 25,000 kilometers on it. I bought it online in Toronto, Canada by a Ford dealer in February and had it shipped to Denmark. It has all the bells and whistles including power step, massaging leather seats, twin panel moonroof, 
and the technology package it has no back seat a rear seat they have been taken out and i'm going to explain to you why in just a moment i have sourced an undercover tonneau cover locally here in denmark and have had it paint to match the truck here you see the rear seats in the bed of the truck it's registered as a work truck and because of that the back seat had to be taken out due to Danish law. I can put them back at a later date if I pay some additional tax. The orange rear turning light had to be rebuilt into uh, the tail lights because Danish law is not permitting the standard red light flashing. So a small PLC unit is controlling the, or the, the orange LED light blinking. I bought it for 66,000 Canadian dollars. That's around 48,000 US dollars. With the shipping cost conversion into Danish law and tax, the cost on the street with the license place is around 74,000 US dollars. This is my forever truck that I plan to keep for the next 15 to 20 years. Thank you TFL, TFL for letting me submit my 1F50. And stay safe, everybody. All right, Tommy, um, you know, that Ford F-150 is cool, uh, but the 12 wheel drive, uh, is that, what is that thing? It, it is incredible. How many wheels steer? I mean, it's all wheels. Did you see that? No, I'm focusing more on the F-150 to be honest. How can I focus on the F-150 <laughs> when you have this incredibly cool I don't know what that is, truck next to it. <laughs> you, heard, you heard it here first, my dad has never seen a crane. Um, but <laughs> Send us a video of the crane. I want to see the crane. I want to see how many of those wheels actually steer. And I want to know if that is indeed 12 wheel drive because obviously it's got all those wheels to distribute the weight, but that is one cool BAS. I'm going with BAS because that's what it okay, says. Okay, what are you going to give the F-150? The F-150 is way cool. You know, seeing a Ford in Europe, um, is always like seeing um, a fish out of water because good luck parking that thing <laughs> at your local grocery store or your local car park. But yeah, it's cool. I love, like I say, I love seeing uh, American trucks abroad and that was a cool example of one. So I'm gonna give it a eight out of 10. I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10 because it takes a lot of dedication to drive such a large truck through Europe. Uh, we had a Tiguan once in Germany and that thing felt massive. So driving a full-size American truck has got to take some, uh, some, some real cojones, as Nathan would say. All right, if you are watching this, uh, give us a walk around of the crane. <laughs> That's the one I really want to see. What? <laughs> Why? I can see that at the local Home Depot, like two miles from here, Tommy, but that crane, oh my God. But this is in Denmark. It's an F-150 in Denmark. No, that's the cooler story here. All right, and if you guys want to send us some videos, <laughs> how do they go about doing that, Tommy? Well, I've got a little link in the description below. Be sure to click that link and watch the tutorial. Yep, and I'd love to see some of you guys with trucks that you don't like you know this is called dude i love or hate my ride we've just gotten a ton of love i want to see the ones that are like not so much loved i think that'd be a really interesting video as always this is roman and tommy head over to tfltruck.com for the latest and greatest and news views and 12 wheel it's only drive. eight wheels no, where are around, the other go around the side what do you mean eight wheels it's 12. one two you three get... four five six no, seven no no, eight. no no go around you'll see keep going i don't believe you go no come on come on look there there you go how many one two Three, four, five. Keep going. One, two, three, four. Oh yeah, it is 12 wheels. <laughs> right, that's crazy. All right. That's a cool truck. See you guys next time. Ciao.